Well, hello again, and welcome to the VK6CS Fun with Amateur Radio channel. Now, uh, I've got something else today, and uh, let's hope the focus stays okay. I've got this rather nice air spaced variable capacitor. Um, get it a bit closer to the camera. There we go. Um, I reckon that's probably good for a couple of thousand volts. I think it was advertised as being good for a couple of thousand volts. You can see the spacing on that, you can see sort of roughly how big that is compared with my hand. It's very nicely made, this is not new old stock, I'd say this is a brand new uh, brand new item. Got it from Russia, from the Ukraine. It's actually got a ball bearing race in here, where the shaft uh, goes through. As you can see, it's got quite a nice uh, ceramic mount there for uh, one side of the capacitor at each end. Uh, some nice copper straps on there for uh, the connections and some lugs on there to connect the other side of the capacitor. So really uh, really very pleased with that now the reason I got this is um, I needed a large plate tune capacitor for my uh, for my HF amplifier now this wouldn't be big enough um, uh, so what I thought was I would uh, remove one from my uh, from my ATU that would be suitable and then I would fit this in the ATU and uh, I'll, uh, I'll let you know why I think that's a pretty good idea now first of all I'll just show you so that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a 200 picofarad uh, capacitor this one here uh, this one here this is a 500 this is a 500 uh, picofarad capacitor I think this one's rated, uh, I don't know, the spacing on it is not that dissimilar, it's a little bit better. It's a little bit better than the spacing on the other one. Uh, but uh, as a size comparison, this is a fair bit bigger. If you put them next to each other, like that. You can see that it's uh, quite considerably larger. Now, <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'll just uh, get that out of the way, and that for a second, and that even. We'll get back to that in a minute. Now the capacitor I'm thinking of using is this one, and this is my uh, this is my SPC ATU. And this is the one here. That's a 500. That's a 500 picofarad. Yeah, you can see here what the spacing on that is. You know, that's a fairly significant spacing on that uh, capacitor. That's easily big enough to uh, uh, be a plate tune capacitor for my amplifier. Um, just as a size comparison, there's the one that. Uh, let's close that. There's the one that I've just bought, and uh, it will fit. <laughs> it will easily, uh, it'll easily fit in there. Now, why I, uh, I think it will be okay to take this one out of the uh, of the ATU and put the smaller one in. Now, this is the this is the same size. So, well, I'll, I'll get back get back to that in a sec, but this is the same size as that so that's how that's how I intend to mount those in the amplifier one above the other they're both exactly the same size that'll be the load bottom one will be the tune the the, the, the spacing of the plates on the tune that's actually about uh, that's half the value of the other one the same physical size so the spacing will be twice the size on that 500 picofarad um, so that'll be the plate tune That'll be the load, um, and the reason that uh, the reason that I think that will be fine, and I'll still be able to use this ATU for uh, a reasonable amount of power. I mean, heaven forbid I'd run more than 400 watts, but um, you know, if I move to America, I might want to run a bit more power, or New Zealand, and um, if I put this uh, if I if I put this smaller capacitor. In that position there in the ATU, I should still be fine, and uh, I'll tell you why. 
I'll just get this out of the way. I'll stand that the right way up, probably help. And I'll just get this out of the way. Now, with the with the ATU, it's just going to sort of in position. There we go. I should really just put some marks on the carpet, shouldn't I? Now, with the ATU, it's an SPC type, which means the RF comes in. It goes through that 500 puff capacitor. That only needs to be a 200 puff. I put the 500 puff in there because I, I had it. <coughs> I actually bought it for a tank circuit in a, in a transmitter. Um, and then you've got another capacitor there. That's the output. And because it's an SPC, there's a variable inductor there, like that. And there's also a capacitor there, like that. They're ganged, and that's the that's the circuit diagram of my um, ATU that I just showed you. Can you actually see that? Yeah, I think so. Okay, now if that's in and that's out like that, then I only really need a wide space capacitor at this point here. On this, on this side of the ATU, on the output. And I intend to keep the wide spaced uh, capacitor there. And the, the reason is that the voltage, the voltage that you see uh, on these, uh, across these capacitors, <coughs> let's say, uh, for argument's sake, let's just pick a number out of the air. Um, uh, let's say 1500 watts. Okay, that's probably very optimistic. I very much doubt I'd get 1500 watts out of it, even if I lived in America. But let's say it's 1500 watts. Okay, so you've got 1500 times the impedance. Let's say that's 300 ohms. I need a new pen. Let's say that's 300 ohms. Okay, so you've got 1500 times 300 equals <coughs> 450,000, okay, and the square root of that, 670 volts. Okay, so I'd have 670, 670 volts across here. 670 volts, okay. Now, on the input, let's say I've got 1500 watts, like that, multiplied by 50 ohms equals. 75,000, square root of that, 273 volts, 273 volts, let's say that's 50 ohms, okay, because the transmitter, the amplifier is going to be tuned into a 50 ohm dummy load, then it's going to be connected to the ATU, so the, the, the input impedance from the transmitter is, is only going to be 50 ohms, and because it's only going to be 50 ohms, I can get away with a much smaller capacitor there. So it's 200 puff. I need another pen. 200 puff, but it doesn't need to be uh, an, a, a really big wide space one because it's, it's only going to have 273 volts across. <coughs> so, uh, so there we go. And, and the, the higher this impedance gets, the higher that voltage you'll get. Um, and uh, that's why uh, that's why I can get away with putting the smaller capacitor in the um, uh, on that side on the input side of the ATU. Now on my transmitter, um, so RF choke. I don't know if I'm going to be able to draw it actually. Going down to the valve anode, and then going off to the tank circuit. Nah. It's not going to work. But anyway, that capacitor there, the one that the, the, the plate tune one, is going to have to be a wide space capacitor. Uh, because um, the, the voltage across that, uh, to work that out, uh, phew, jumped in feet first. 
Yeah. I'll work that out. So let's say uh, let's say 2800 volts. 2800 volts times 0 0.7 amps equals 1000 1960 watts input. Um, so so. Uh, we'll move over I, right, so that's um, 2800, 2800 divided by 0 0.7 equals 4000, so that's 4000 ohms, so let's say that's 4k ohms. Ah, this is just, it's going to let me down here. Let's say that's 4,000 ohms, okay, across there. So it's the power times the, the square root of the power times the impedance. That's 1,960 watts multiplied by uh, 4,000 ohms, wasn't it? 4,000 equals, it's the square root of that, equals... Oh yeah, so across that capacitor there, it's going to be 2,000, 2,800 volts. So that's why it needs to have the wide spacing. That big wide space cap needs to come out of the, come out of the ATU and uh, go into the amplifier. So anyway, I hope you found that interesting. I'm terribly sorry about my pen dying in the uh, dying in the backside, as we uh, as we say here in Australia. That's not quite how we phrase it. But uh, this being a YouTube channel and all, um, I'll try and get another pen uh, ready for next time. Something that uh, something that you can see. Well, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.